Okay. Um, just opening up my agenda. Honorable members of the Portfolio Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure, uh, Deputy Minister Kivit, Acting DG, um, and your team, our support team from the parliament, guests and everyone who is watching our Portfolio Committee today, greetings to you all. Um, we have recording in progress. Uh, we may experience uh, challenges of being kicked in, out, uh, and we'll come back uh, if we can due to the national crisis that we all know of, um, of load shedding. But good news is that we have had President cutting short his visit to New York, and again, there will be an agent a cabinet. Uh, I don't know whether it was last night or today, but it shows the willingness and um, to resolve the crisis by our president, uh, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa. So we're looking forward in hearing the good news either today or tomorrow that will ensure that uh, this load shedding is a thing of the past. But because we're still living with it now, uh, let's, try, let's try to maximize the climb a tree if possible, as I was like doing so yesterday, go to wherever the network is not challenging you so that uh, you can hear what we are doing, we are currently doing in the meeting or you can participate fully. And um, our meeting today, we requested this meeting because in one of the reports, in fact, not one, many reports that we have received, we have, uh, we have been told by the department that there are so many unused properties um, that are lying around uh, in South Africa in almost all the provinces. And we know that uh, the owner of government properties is none other than public works. So we want today to get a briefing uh, from the department and uh, that they must inform us as the portfolio committee, what new ways can they use to leverage on these properties to prevent e destruction and dismantling uh, of these properties. We know some of them are illegally occupied. I think in one of the reports that we got from um, IGT, yeah, I think it was IDG. They even said that uh, the, um, was it ESA or IDG? But they even said that if these properties can be maximally used, the government can also uh, cut on leasing um, uh, funds because the department is leasing buildings all over South Africa, but there are buildings that are lying, they're not being utilized. It can also generate revenue from leasing out those properties that are lying there unused. But okay, we will hear from them today what exactly is happening, um, what means will they use to ensure that uh, um, they, they, they resolve the matter at hand. With those few words, honorable members welcome you in this meeting. Um, the apologies uh, that we have received um, is the one of the minister, uh, Minister Dilil, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Fan Staden. Any other apology, Ms. Martinez, if you are in the, Ms. Martinez has indicated that she has serious challenges of uh, network today. Ms. Martinez. 
Thank you, Chairperson. The only one that you may have missed from the list is the acting DG. He sent a letter as well to say he's not going to be able to attend this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Martinez. Then can we then um, turn over to DM as she is the leader of the team today? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Honorable Chairperson, I can see on my side that uh, the picture is quite dark. There's nothing else I can do. Uh, I've tried to switch on the lights. It doesn't help. Um, but uh, a good morning to yourself as chair, uh, the honorable members, uh, the support team, uh, the DDGs that are with me today from the department and the support team from the department. A uh, good morning uh, to all of us. Um, chair, I'm, I'm, let me first appreciate uh, your, your opening uh, remarks. Indeed, that cabinet is held this morning. Uh, that's where minister is uh, this morning. And um, also the acting DG is not with us because he has to divide himself between Scopa and supporting minister in the cabinet because we are also taking some reports to cabinet today as a department. And therefore in the team, I'm um, accompanied or supported by the responsible DDG, uh, Ms. Nyeliti Makubela, um, and a, a, a team of uh, officials that uh, she works with. So um, we, without wasting time, uh, let me appreciate uh, the opportunity to brief the committee uh, on the subject matter. In, indeed, uh, Chair, this meeting taking place during uh, Heritage Month, uh, I could not, um, but uh, note that actually this day is has a very important significance uh, in in what you are uh, doing as members of parliament uh, holding the executive to account um, owing to the um, sad history uh, that we have we really must always um, thank and appreciate the democracy uh, which was fought for and uh, so many died fighting for. And those of us who were able to live both in the upper date era and the post upper date era must always keep in mind um, what, where we come from and where we are, are going to. Um, because even the talks uh, that were to discuss the future of this country collapsed at some point. But this day is important because it's the day where the, uh, the late Tata Madiba and the, the former president de Klerk agreed on this day to restart uh, those collapsed negotiations. So for, for us, the fact that we live in a post apartheid South Africa, we must always keep in mind where we come from. And therefore the laws that we, 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 we pass and the laws that we implement must uh, seek to uh, take our nation forward. And therefore the law that we are dealing with in this uh, presentation uh, today, um, which is Guyama, it's, it is about land and agrarian reform. It's about sustainable human settlements. It's about rural development. It's about integrated urban de uh, development. That's, that's the trust, which is re reform. Um, and, and also looking at those uh, four areas through the race, race and gender lens. We, we must always uh, be and uh, make sure that um, 
as we dispose of state property, um, that race, racial and gender lens is always with us. Um, Ms. Nyelet is going to respond to the trust of the purpose of this meeting, uh, which is what we are doing, um, uh, or the strategies which the department is implementing to optimize the, the use of unutilized state, uh, state owned properties. Um, the, the, she will be making the presentation. And with your permission, Honorable Chairperson, uh, I will hand over to Ms. Ming Nyeliti, DTG Nyeliti Makubela, who's responsible for uh, the, the race division. Um, over to you, DTG. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, oh, good morning, um, um, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Good morning, uh, colleagues um, that are here today, uh, and good morning, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you. My name is Nile Tima Kubele. I'm the DTG responsible for real estate management services, and the state-owned portfolio falls under 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 my branch. Um, we we here to make a presentation, Chairperson, on the on on what the department is planning to do, or what the department has been doing uh, in, in, to safeguard or to optimally utilize uh, the state portfolio. Um, all right, um, as I said, uh, Chairperson, we are here to, 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 to give a report onto the portfolio committee on the strategies that the department will implement to opt opt uh, optimize the use of uh, state-owned properties in order to prevent uh, destruction and dismantling, as we have seen in the past, as the chairperson has already alluded to. Um, in terms of the, of the Guillama, uh, the property management entity is the, is the custodian of national government immovable assets, a default custodian of unregistered and unsurveyed properties, and we are mandated to provide quality, user-specific, functional accommodation for client departments. Currently, the department is a custodian of about 29,322 registered properties and unregistered land parcels with 93,942 improvements. Of those uh, uh, improvements, we have got 88,300 buildings that are allocated currently to user departments across the, across the, across the country. But if you look at the type of buildings that we're dealing with, it's more the housing, just one second. Apologies, Chair Pitten. Um, if you look at the, the type of buildings that we say they are being used by, current, uh, by user departments currently, it's most, mostly housing for the Department of Defense and the Department of, uh, I mean, the South African Police Services. The surplus state-owned properties are estimated to be 5,720, which is what we are going to, what this is, which is the properties that we're going to go um, out and see how we can then secure those properties and make and make uh, and make sure that we are able to, to, to generate revenue there. Of the 5,720, uh, 5,187 are land parcels. Uh, and farms and 533 improvements. Uh, in instances where the properties is not required by the state, this is where we're gonna make it available to the market for rental purposes, uh, purposes or, or investment. <coughs> My slides are not moving. Okay. The Minister of Public Works is mandated by Cabinet by cabinet to develop an overarching policy framework to govern the management of those immovable, asset, uh, immovable assets and government, um, I mean, through Guillama. And Guillama is intended to ensure that the value of an immovable asset is optimized throughout its life cycle, which encompasses by planning, acquisition, operations, and maintenance and disposal of such properties. Um, this is just more uh, background information on, on what Guillermo is supposed to do. Suitable land that should be released to facilitate the following objectives, land and agrarian reform, sustainable human settlements, 
rural development and integrated um, urban planning. Racial and gender inequities should be embodied in the disposal of state movable assets, which is what our disposable um, our disposal policy um, entails. The objective of our policy is to outline the conceptual framework of the disposal of these assets and develop and provide a framework within which the disposal process is supposed to be um, um, uh, executed and provide framework which enables the department to prioritize preference in respect of the method or beneficiaries of such, um, of such properties. This is just a, a list of the prescripts that are um, guiding us in terms of how we're going to utilize these properties. I, um, I'm not gonna go through them. And then uh, the guiding principles uh, from Guillama, we take our mandate from section 51E that uh, when immovable assets is acquired or disposed, the best value of my, for money must be realized. You will note that currently we do have uh, uh, properties that are being utilized by various um, uh, individuals or people that have are, use, are using their housing, but they're not paying um, according to they're not paying according to the market related rentals. Many properties were literally just given away for people to take care of the of the properties in, on behalf on behalf of government. And this is now um, becoming a problem as the National Treasury has given us a mandate to then make sure that whenever we're disposing properties or whenever we are leasing out our properties we are able to charge the market-related rentals. And we'll discuss it later um, with, with, the, with the following slides. We have a written approval from the minister um, that, that, that we must obtain for all disposal. It's not something that uh, officials can do on their own. It must be approved by, by the executive authority. And as I said, National Treasury has now made, uh, uh, given us a an, an directive that we cannot um, let out state property under the market uh, threshold. This is the diagram that uh, just shows the processes that we're following. First, we have identified the process, uh, properties that need, to be, um, that, that need to be utilized for this process. And in identifying, although we said there's 5,187 properties that are available, we need to then make sure that we assess uh, the properties to make sure that they are not um, earmarked for any other government initiative. And this is where the surplus, or at least the word surplus then applies to, to make sure that any property that we're going to let out to the market is not earmarked for any government priority. And then, then there's the physical disposal of those uh, properties. Identifying the surplus, we may need to make sure that the, the asset is no longer required for government for service delivery. It has become too costly to maintain or utilize and the asset is no longer, uh, sorry, this is a repeat. And then uh, it, we can uh, also use the asset for socioeconomic objectives of government. And here, this is where we have identified that it's not just um, individuals or, or, or business that would be interested in such properties. We have noted that uh, there are also non-governmental organization or non, not, not for profit organizations that are interested in our properties for socioeconomic um, uh, objectives that will assist government in at the end of the day. The assessment I have already indicated what uh, the assessment is about, whether the uh, whether there are net benefits, either social, financial, or other terms, whether there are secondary service obligations associated with the asset, which dictates its retention, and also consider cultural, historical, and environmental importance that may have been that may have been declared a uh, heritage or a conservation site. This is, these are just uh, the ways in which the department um, uh, can or can dispose its properties through letting, which is what as, as the real estate management um, branch are responsible for. There's also a donation process that we can follow. It's within the department, but under the branch called real estate investment services, we can exchange properties with other government entities also under the real estate investment um, um, uh, branch and we can enter into public-private partnerships. Pu public-private partnerships are strategies that is already in place uh, as a department. We have a, a precinct called uh, Salvacop where the department has public-private partnerships and we have, uh, we have started actually uh, developing some of the properties to accommodate um, um, our clients. 
Uh, I think the, uh, the that South Africa is already in there and we are building uh, facilities for four more um, national departments or the headquarters of, of four more national departments. And this, this is a long-term plan that is currently running. The following methods, we're gonna use a, a public tender for the letting um, uh, going forward. We have developed a circular called Circular 135. It's been a long time coming. The department has tried to advertise these pro pro properties previously, but unfortunately the, the process that was followed uh, was not uh, approved at the time. We needed to go back to the drawing board and make sure that we had covered all our bases before we advertised the, the, the tender. We felt that uh, the assessment of wh whether those properties are still needed by government for other, um, for other purposes when it was not done properly. So the, the tender was pulled back, but now we have finalized the circular 135 as, I, as I've mentioned, and those, those uh, properties are going to be um, uh, advertised. And then there's also the donation that I've also spoken about. And then the call for development proposals, the department is embarking on a strategy called the refurbishment, operate and transfer. The minister has spoken about it widely. And we held a, a conference uh, in July where we explained how this property, this process of ROT is going to unfold, where we're going to release big properties um, such as the, the telecom towers, um, Civitas, for those that know the Civitas building, we used to accommodate the Department of Health there, but they have since vacated the building because of its uh, occupational health and safety issues. And in there, we are, we are asking investors to actually sink their own money in those properties and then we can then they operate. We will guarantee a tenant for those buildings, and then we'll pay rent to the developers. But the property remains a state property, and which will then revert at a later stage when um, when when the the financials have been then recovered by the investors. And then um, we also have the, the 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 transfers between spheres of government. We do receive from time to time. Uh, for instance, the city of Cape Town will identify a property that they would like to use for their own um, for their own um, um, government priorities. And in there, we have uh, a way of also um, identifying another property that we can then transfer between ourselves um, to say, or maybe we call it a, a property swap. We give them a particular property for, for, for their development, and then they give us another property as, um, as public works. We have in the past received a lot of unsolicited, unsolicited bids for various properties, notably um, from, the, from the coastal properties, where we are receiving a lot of requests to say, can we list this property? Can we list uh, that property for, for, for various reasons? But like I said, we needed to make sure that those properties are not earmarked for anything else. And this process is unfolding as we speak. We have, for instance, received um, a big application in Cape Town for about 20 parcels of, 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 of government land. When we did an, uh, an analysis of those properties, we realized that um, eight of those properties have already been requested by the city of Cape Town. And another eight of those properties was already requested by the Department of Human Settlements. So for the purposes of that application, we could only look at four parcels, which are still big parcels because they've got uh, big plans for that property. And if approved, then that, that, that could go forward. Um, okay, these are the areas of concerns that we have picked up in our analysis. We do have existing leases that are, as, as I've mentioned earlier, where the rental is below the market. For the people that are occupying those leases and are, and are still interested in leasing those properties, we will then have to renegotiate all those existing leases and make sure that we we, we, we get value for money for those leases. There are considerations that there could be other, there could be other people that are in occupation of those uh, places that may not necessarily be able to pay um, the market related rental rates. And this is where the national treasure will then come in, but that will be, uh, that will be um, dealt with on a case by case basis because not everybody is of the same, um, um, uh, economic uh, status because other people can afford, but we realize that we, we recognize that there could be other people that may not necessarily be able to afford um, the market rate market rentals. 
We also have an issue that um, we don't market our properties, which is why um, the Secular 135 was developed so that we can actually go out on tender and uh, uh, invite investors to say, we do have properties here. We have properties that are in suburban areas. We have got properties that are on the outskirts and obviously a lot of agricultural land that we think we can increase our, um, our revenue there, thereof. Um, and obviously we need to formalize uh, our partnerships with the municipalities for the administration of state-owned properties. I'll give you an example. We've got um, South African police services, uh, police stations that are actually owned by municipalities but are in very bad condition. So we need to, we need to engage with the municipalities to see how can we best leverage uh, those properties, whether we do the property swap, as I've indicated before, so that we can be able to improve those police stations and maintain, because currently we are inhibited um, by law or at least by our own processes that we are not able to maintain those properties because they do not belong to the Department of Public Works. And um, this is just a, a process flow of, 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 of what I've been uh, uh, speaking about previously, the identifying of those properties, we have now developed the terms of references. We are ready to go out on tender. After the advert, then we will do an evaluation process. This is where we want to check the, the, the impact, the socioeconomic impact of the applications that we will receive. And then we will do recommendations for approval and, uh, and, and managing the contracts going forward. It's, um, this uh, next slide uh, is just a, uh, a time frame of, of what is the department, what, what, where we are in the process so that we can make sure that at the end of the day we, we, we are done. And this was necessitated by the requirement that, or at least by the recognition that we've got uh, NGOs, NPOs and, and, and other similar organizations that are also interested in, in, in state-owned properties. And we understand that we may not be able to treat them like business because they are not for profit organizations. And in the end of the day, they are looking at the same socioeconomic issues that the, that, that, um, the department is dealing with. The other dates, um, 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 the, the other dates or the first three dates have now passed and we have met those, um, those milestones. And now we are busy consolidating inputs and then we'll make sure that the circular is approved by the director general on by the 30th of September, and then we, we implement the circular going forward. It must be noted that there is a circular already approved last year, and in the process of trying to implement that process, we, it was identified by our minister that we need to expand the circular to make sure that includes this organization. And this is what this process is all about. Um, um, for the existing tenants, this is what we are planning to do. We are going to do a, a once-off special dis dispensation to clear the backlog of, our, of applications to make sure that, um, and then we're going to do the request for proposal going forward. I've already um, elaborated um, this particular slide in a, in a, in a, in a, in a previous slide. Um, and then we, 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 we will do the invitation. So the all existing tenants whose leases have already expired, existing tenants whose lease agreements are still valid but will expire in the next three months, and existing tenants whose lease uh, um, agreements are still valid for the foreseeable uh, future. We will have to renew, renegotiate with them to make sure that the leases are of market, um, um, market related rentals. We have received a lot of applications previously unsolicited, and we will do a once-off uh, dispensation to clear those applications as well to make sure that we analyze them in terms of which category they fall in. If they are NGOs, we will use the new or the expanded uh, Circular 135 to deal with them. But if it's still business, then we will follow the, 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 the Circular in terms of how do we deal with, pro with business that has um, applied for, for, for our properties. Um, the, the RFP, I've already spoken to the RFP chairperson and honorable members. And then we will we will do this process. As I said, for now we have cleared about 218 properties that will go out on tender in the next month or so. Out of the 5,000, understanding that the capacity constraints that we have as a department, we will be able to advertise everything all at once. And then we will we will clear the we will advertise the properties as as we clear them. And for now we have cleared about 217 properties. Um, 
Um, in the evaluation process, um, we will look at the administrative compliance, obviously, to make sure that everybody that has actually submitted their proposal, they meet the, 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 the criteria that we would have set out according to our terms of reference. And then we'll do a credit risk and afford affordability assessment. This is especially for those ones that are planning or at least are proposing to do uh, big uh, investments. There are smaller um, applications where someone will just say, may I rent this house? I'll just fix it um, where it is um, where it is broken or, and then they can take the process forward. So the issue of credit risk might not necessarily be a big issue, but for bigger projects like uh, the ROT, as I've discussed before, we'll definitely have to check those credit and risk uh, affordability assessments to minimize uh, challenges going forward. And then um, we're gonna, then we will do um, evaluate the financial investment and transformation proposal. Like I said, it, the, 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 we have government priorities that we need to meet and we, we have a property empowerment um, uh, policy that we also need to incorporate when we are doing the evaluations to make sure that we, 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 we comply with such a policy. And that that will be that will be all Chairperson, from my side. Thank you very much. Chairperson? No, I I I thought maybe DM will add uh, before I then invite honorable members. DM, you'll uh, come in. We 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 want your responses. Yeah, yeah, well, chair, I think that um, let let's let's uh, wait for or let's hear uh, questions from the honourable members, and uh, we will then uh, provide responses if if there are any if there are any questions that we will provide responses. Thank you, chair. Um, thank you, DM. Uh, thank you, DDG. I'll now invite honorable members uh, to raise their questions and comments on this uh, presentation. Um, honorable Hicklin, you will be the first one. Honorable Graham Mare, the second one. Um, those that can raise their hands, they can indicate by just saying their names. Honorable Hicklin. Thank you so much, Chair. I'm not going to put my video on um, only because we are ha we're having load shedding and I'm trying to operate off my dongle. So I'm I'm conserving bandwidth if you'll excuse me. Um, thank you so much, DDG. I'm looking at some residential properties more than at at uh, the presentation that you have made. I thank you so much for this. And I think it will be informative going forward. I raised a number of questions early on in 2021 with respect to um, properties that are in Tswani, which is slightly north of, of my area. I am from Gauteng, but there were specific properties that I raised questions with the minister um, regarding. Two were in Malherba Street. There are a number of other properties, um, but the two particular ones that I raised, I am prepared to provide you with, with the exact addresses. I was told uh, we're going to be given or donated or whatever. There was going to be some arrangement with uh, the Department of Social Development. This was back in March and May of 2021. Um, nothing has ever come of the arrangement with social development. And the, the properties are becoming more and more vandalized. Now, there are two NGOs that are desperate for these um, properties, how does one actually go about giving these properties, making them available to NGOs? The, the properties are so severely vandalized that they are mere shells now, um, but these NGOs still need these properties and want to make use of them. There, there was no reference to actually 
um, making donations to NGOs who could actually try and make use of them. I know you in in the 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 presentation you said that they they could make applications. But we are just being vandalized to the extent that there was an old synagogue in Pretoria where promises were made through the um, heritage advisory services and through the arts and culture department that a, a, an arts and culture center would be established at the old synagogue in Paul Kruger Street as a heritage center, not only because it was the first synagogue built in Pretoria, but also that it was the site of the Ravonia treason trial. Yet again, absolutely nothing has been done about it. And the, the old synagogue is deteriorating again to such a dramatic extent and absolutely nothing has been done except that the roof has been maintained. But that was done again in 2011, if memory serves me correctly, and nothing further has been done. And promises have been made by the department for some form of restoration being done on, this, the, on these particular buildings. If I could get some commitment from the department that something can be done, and there have been offers of a a public partnership working with the department to resurrect these buildings because they are all of significance. I can supply you with all the information should you so require. I really would like to get something going on this. Thank you so much, GDG. Honor Graham Mare. Honorable Grammar, or maybe it's me, I can't hear her. No, it's, we can't hear, Chairperson. You're still on mute, Sam. No, she is not on mute. Honorable Grammar, maybe you must switch off your video and only open your mic so that we can hear you. We have not heard a single Sorry. word that you uttered. I suspect that uh, she has no mm -hmm. shedding where she is. She's um, mute? Oh. She, she's mute now, but before she was not. Another program, Mare? She's indicated that Sharome should, Honorable Sharome should go chair. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We'll come back for her later on. Uh, Honorable Grandmother, please look for an area where there is a better network. Honorable Fanskalve. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and good morning to the Honorable Members, our DM departmental staff, our support staff of parliament. Uh, chairperson, I'm, I'm, when, as we receive this presentation, I'm very much worried because uh, for quite a number of years, uh, we, we, we sort of monitored uh, this unused buildings and we've raised uh, the, the red flags with the department. And we find that uh, it's either there's no monitoring of, of these buildings, or I, I, I'm not sure how to put it, but the buildings are deteriorating at a very uh, 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 fast pace because we find now that we have buildings that's been unused for quite some time. We could have uh, assisted in revenue generation for the department 
which are now empty shelves due to vandalization. But also, Chairperson, we find that as we spoke about this issue about the maintenance, uh, routine maintenance of existing buildings, we find that uh, if we receive the, the report today, that there's now a process of market-related rentals that needs to be instituted, whereas the department didn't play its part in terms of maintaining those uh, uh, buildings that's, that's in use or that's up for rental. Uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a concern to me, which means that uh, uh, the, 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 the amounts that, uh, that the buildings are worth or has been worth uh, previously, like five years back, the, the, the state of the buildings has deteriorated so much that you can't really say that uh, you, you, uh, you, you keep it at, at that amount that it has already been valued for. So I think we, we, we need to, to look into that issue. And uh, what I want to know from the department uh, is if they are aware of the exact state of all the buildings that they are having, including uh, those th that, that they are letting out. Uh, is there a some kind of routine monitoring uh, 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 measures in place to check at least those buildings once a year or how are they going to, how are they doing it to, 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 uh, um, to make sure that the buildings are being, uh, 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 still being occupied, that the buildings are in a good state, and what is the state of the affairs of the different buildings. And then, Chairperson, when we look at the, the, the issue of the swapping of properties, that might be a good thing, but uh, are, are, we, are we talking, when we speak about swapping of properties, that you will swap a property with a, another property from national to province or vice versa, with, with, with uh, the, the same uh, value? Or how are you dealing with, with, with that issue? Or is it based on the needs or, or, or what can we get some uh, more clarification in terms of the swapping of, of properties? Then Chairperson, I, I know that the minister and the department has been busy with, with this uh, donation of properties for GBV and, and all kind of social uh, uh, programs. But, but uh, when we look at NGOs and NPOs, uh, I'm, I, I just want to caution the department because you have uh, really uh, NGOs and NPOs Who's, who's really uh, wanting to assist government in terms of, of social relief or social programs. But we, we might have unintended consequences in terms of that, whereby it, 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 it's, it's uh, people who's, who's, who's like, um, uh, like fronting, NGOs that's fronting for real investment, or people who has money, who want to capitalize or use that NGOs or NPOs to capitalize on those properties. And immediately after they get the, the properties, they, they, they uh, transfer or, or, or use the, the capitalists are using it for bus use business ventures or things like that to, uh, to, to, to be uh, profit making things. So I would like to know if... Uh, in, they have uh, uh, measures in place to ensure that uh, even though they're going to transfer those uh, buildings or donate these buildings to NGOs and NPOs, that there is clauses in place to, to prohibit those buildings to be uh, sold uh, within a specific uh, time frame or, or being used later on for, for profit-making uh, initiatives. Uh, and 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 maybe use uh, uh, put in a clause that that stipulates that 
uh, the, the original transfer of the building is for this purpose, but in the event that it, 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 uh, the department become aware that it's not being used for that purpose or, or for profit-making purpose, that's totally contrary to the original uh, aim of, of the transfer of the building, that the building should be re uh, 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 should be taken back to, to public works or something like that. And then there's also the issue, Chairperson, in terms of, of uh, buildings that has already been transferred from, from national to, to provincial. And, and it's, it's, it's not being used properly or being looked after. Uh, is, is there some kind of way to monitor those buildings to say that this was the orig original intention of transferring the, the, uh, the, the, the or motivation that has been uh, submitted in terms of transferring that buildings to, to, to uh, local or to, to provincial. And now it seems as if uh, it's not been used for the, the 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 intended purpose. So this is what we're going to do. We we need to 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 return the buildings back to national so that they can can see what they are doing. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, um, Honourable Van Skalvik. Honourable Graham Murray, are you fine now? I'm hoping so. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, we can this time. We can hear okay. you clearly. I'm Thank sorry. You. I normally check that everything's working before a meeting, um, but I was running a bit late this morning. Um, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you very much to Ms. Makubele for, for the presentation. Um, and, I mean, obviously, you know, these unused properties and, and properties that are not generating sufficient income has been a, a bit of a, a bugbear for me from, from when we started. Um, so I'm glad to see that there's some movement in, in this in this process. But I'm really concerned that this is just another another nicely titled project um, that's going to go nowhere. I've just recently been looking through some of the presentations that were done in 2013, 2014, following the implementation of Guillaume um, and the department's attempts to get the immovable asset register up to date. And we're hearing exactly the same stories, the same excuses, the same issues um, that were raised in meetings in 2013, 2014 with respect to um, not being able to find all the properties, not knowing where all the properties are, um, awaiting physical verification of properties. Um, uh, Ms. Ms. Makubele um, didn't mention that there's, there's massive amounts of unsurveyed land that still exists that nobody even knows who that belongs to, who the properties um, are um, assigned to, whether or not they're public works properties. So, so while this is this is great for dealing with a lot of what we we've got already, we still don't know everything we've got and the extent to which we have um, properties around the country. So, um, a huge amount of work still needs to be done, and we've also recently heard again that new mechanisms mechanisms are going to be put into place um, to manage the immovable asset register. So that is a huge concern. Um, and then um, one of the questions I have is that. About a year ago, um, I came across um, something that referenced a letting out document. Um, we were trying to assist the Seal Rescue Center in Hart Bay to, to get a lease um, on, a, on a section of the Hart Bay Harbor because they perform a function that nobody else performs. They're an NGO um, and they were panicking because they had been subletting a property at the, at the Hart Bay Harbor. And we were informed that it would be done according to the letting out document and that this document um, had uh, mechanisms in place for letting out for NGOs um, and that they would be following that process. I've been requesting that document for a year now and I still haven't seen it. I recently asked a question about a property in the Northwest um, called the Rushwip. It's it's in Rushwip. It's a, it's a shooting range. It has always been a shooting range. A shooting club existed there. It's owned by Public Works. People there who own a gun shop who've got an indoor shooting range who assist the SAPs in that area have been trying to lease this Rushwip shooting range for four years. I put in a question recently, and one of the responses was this National Treasury um, put procurement processes on hold. The bid specification was finalized in August 2022 and is currently with the Bid Adjudication Committee for approval. Once approved, the RFP shall be advertised accordingly. They received an unsolicited bid, but it couldn't be processed as an open bid. Um, so 
the property is being absolutely decimated. It says here the department has initiated the process of safeguarding the property. We are spending 15 million rand a year on security on empty properties that are owned by the department. And even when they are getting offers from people that are prepared to pay market-related rental, that are prepared to fix the property, and I did, I did oversight of the property. It has been absolutely destroyed, and apparently it's even worse now. The buildings have been carried away brick by brick. The toilets have been stolen. Um, there's literally nothing left. These people are prepared to take on the property, footstoots, and go with it and provide a service to the police in that area who now have to travel an hour or two to Potchefstroom to keep their gun competency licenses in place. And the department just is blocking it. I don't understand why um, there's this resistance to dealing with people, to allowing people to do what needs to be done. That's one of the issues. Waterloo Green in, in, in Weinberg in the Western Cape, there are three houses on that property. They are full to the brim with homeless people who have literally destroyed every property there. They now have full-time security on the property. When we did oversight there, one of the ladies who was part of our oversight team, who's a community member, recognized the man who had mugged her the week before, and he's living on that property. There was a murder there a couple of weeks ago. I've raised this with the department. They've got a security guard on there, but why are we protecting a property there have been offers from the local schools to buy the property because they need to extend their, their campuses. And again, nobody comes back, nobody responds, there's no commitment, it's not market-related, there's no engagement. So there has to be a better engagement process with the department so that we can start getting rid of the properties that are causing a headache, start getting rid of properties that we are having to, to, to monitor and secure that are still being vandalized and stolen. These are heritage buildings. And they still, um, we were promised last year, um, or was it the early this year, that in April, that those properties were, were scheduled for demolition. Nothing has happened. Then we heard, no, no, they can't be demolished because they, they're heritage buildings. So there's very, there seems to be very little appetite for keeping our properties in a good state, which Guillermo requires, by the way, we keep referring to Guillermo. Guillermo requires that all our properties are kept in a state that they can provide for service delivery. We're not doing that. Village of Hope in Hardebeer's Port Dam, they applied years ago for a piece of land um, in Hardebeer's Port. It was signed off by Minister Maisie, who said he approves the project and the transfer of that land to these people. When I raised it with the minister, our current minister, she said, no, no, it, it was never agreed to, um, to transfer the property. They've already started building on that property on the undertaking of Minister Nlezi, and now the whole thing is stalled. So um, there just seems to be this, this, this lack of, of consistent approach to anything. Years ago, uh, they brought in Operation Take Back. That was to deal with properties that had been unlawfully occupied, unlawfully sold. Um, there was going to be a deeds registry um, um, verification process where they were looking for anomalies. We haven't heard anything about Operation Take Back, I think, since we came into, into, into Parliament. And then you look at properties like um, Leven Mile End Road in Deep River that has been unlawfully occupied. There are now two security guards on there as a result of our intervention because people approached me to say that the, the people living in the area were very stressed because this is in a residential area. There's a, an, a, an NPO that has, has requested that they take it over to start a school for disabled children. No response from anybody. Um, Bongweni Airport Park in East London. The, the takeover of that property has been so extreme that there are now mansions built on this property. There is deforestation of the indigenous forest in the area. Um, they've established a school there that the Department of Education is paying teachers and principals to run, that they are operating out of shacks, and they have stopped scholar transport from that area to another area because now there's a, a school established in a completely unlawfully occupied part of, of East, East London. It's at the end of the runway. Um, cattle are now, because they're breaking down fences and cattle are now going onto the runway, so it's becoming a hazard. And just there's an intergovernmental task team report that I've read. It's 100 pages. And basically, there's still no way of dealing with this. And we know from, from the report that we received from our researcher that there are a massive number of unlawfully occupied properties um, 
from, from the department side. Knoflox Kral is another example. And that property was earmarked for a forestry reserve. There has been wholesale um, illegal land invasions there, and we know it's politically motivated, and that, is, and that has been proven. However, that being said, the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries is now going to um, – Thank you, thank you, um, Ms. Makubele. I see your message. Um, the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment is now saying that they they they've now cancelled that project because the extent of the land invasions there are so bad that for them to now relocate those people is going to be too costly an exercise. So an entire forestry project that could have brought work to that area, that could have brought jobs, um, and that was obviously working towards environment, forestry, and fisheries, has now been cancelled because of the unlawful occupation of the Knoflox Kral um, site. So we have a huge issue around, around our own management of our existing properties. And the longer we, we don't deal with it, the worse the degradation is, the worse the opportunities are for, for development, um, job creation, and all the other things that we're trying to achieve. So um, while I welcome the fact that we have this, my other concern is that it seems to be like a sort of once-off thing with a time frame um, and a deadline. Is this going to be an ongoing thing? Will NPOs, NGOs, um, and interested private people be able to approach the department and say, listen, there is a property there. It suits my needs. Is there any option for us to discuss? Um, a few years ago, when I first started, a guy approached me. He wanted to set up um, a whole um, restoration of old vehicles, um, vintage vintage cars project in, in Chwani. And when we approached um, the department, they were like, well, yeah, you know, we're using that site for storage. We don't really have anywhere else to store our stuff, so we're not interested. Um, and it was an ideal site. It would have generated a market-related rental for the department. And literally, that guy then had to go and find something else. So we need to create a better environment for people to be able to approach the department and say, I've, I've seen that property. It's not being used. It's not being effectively um, maintained. You're spending money on security for it. Um, can't we can't we can't we come to some sort of agreement? And I know that there are obviously national treasury guidelines, and I know that there are PFMA um processes that have to be followed, but we have to find a way of finding each other so that our properties are being properly um looked after and utilized um, and that people are getting access to these opportunities. I think I've said more than enough. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um... Um, uh, in the absence of hands, um, let me just raise um, uh, let me appreciate the, the talks to what we requested as the as as as, as the portfolio committee. Um, but to me, the presentation doesn't talk to what we have said um, on, on ensuring that some of these buildings are, are saved in a way that the department is able to, to, to cut on costs of renting properties for other departments. That is the first thing. The, the second thing is that um, uh, in the the presentation in the presentation in what uh, Ms. Nyeleti was saying that um, they would then ask for people and Jews to come and 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 say a request for whatever, but uh, that thing is not new. Uh, they've been doing it, uh, but you don't know where it ends. Um, um, and again, we we raised this not once but several times, uh, pointing out as as you know that we're coming from constituency, raising that. Um, I indicated in this meeting that there are properties in in, in Kumbu, Eastern Cape, where I'm coming from, um, properties that used to accommodate the magistrate. It's not only in Kumbu; it's even in other towns. I checked and I found that that those properties belong to Department of Public Works National. In Kumbu, that property had a roof, had a fence, but now that property has no roof, has no fence. And I even asked Minister, why don't you donate these properties to the municipality? Some of the small municipality even lack a space for their offices. Why can't the, the, the department donate 
those properties, um, especially those that are still in good condition, to the local municipalities, especially when the municipalities is indicating that it would like to have that property so that it can use uh, utilize it as its offices. Um, but in the state of that building now, it's in shambles. I don't want to lie to you, it's in shambles. At the time, it had the windows, the roof, the fencing. Now, there's nothing, it's just the walls. I'm talking about something that I said in 2019 and in 2022, it's in that state. Um, uh, but also, one of uh, the issue with Department of Social Development, I think we were informed of a number of safe houses that uh, the department was was was, was uh, donating to social development as part of the safe houses. I even attended one handover with Minister in 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 Gauteng. but that pro- that project. It's silence now. I don't know whether it stopped or social development got all those properties or what exactly is is happening in that. It's another way of of disposing. I am also concerned with NGOs and NPO given a preference because we know that those NGOs and NPOs, some of them are fronting for business people that want to develop that land to rake serious money. So I think whatever you do on that one, you must uh, look at it with fine, fine, fine comb. There must be strict, um, uh, there must be strict rules and regulations on how to take that property, how many years, because you'll 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 see today it's given to an NPO today tomorrow it's a mall, and and a mall that has a ninety nine years list. So it's serious, serious. So you must look at those things. Uh, with those few words, um, DM and your team, over to you. Uh, no, thank you, thank you, uh, Honourable Chairperson. Um, let me appreciate uh, the, the comments and the words of wisdom and caution from the honorable members as well as the questions. Um, in as much as I would uh, have loved to give over to um, Ms. Makubele to, to respond, but I think there are just one or two prefaces that uh, I must I must uh, do, um, which are more general. She will apply her, her mind and responses to the specific uh, areas. <clears throat> the first one is the the one on uh, swapping of property with municipalities or with other spheres of government. Um, or handing over for that matter. We, 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 we do have uh, and do experience such problems where a municipality requests a property. Uh, to utilize a property uh, for its own or for for development of this area. And we have currently cases in court where where such a a municipality was given a, a piece of land, the municipality then sells the land uh, to a private developer, whereas the, 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 the agreement um, or the deed of transfer that we have signed together with the, the municipality clearly indicates that we are giving you this piece of land because you said you want to do one, two, three. In the event that you are unable to do this, you will you will bring back uh, to us 
the ownership. And municipalities tend to overlook this and look for a quick back to, from developers. Now, where such has happened, we have, we have had to, 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 to keep or to hold on onto the, the title deed of that property. Uh, and, and hence there are now cases in court because those private developers can't get the title deeds from the municipalities. We believe that there should be honesty in, uh, in the transfer of, of these properties, especially where it, is, um, it was not for sale. And we believe that uh, a private developer who is interested, our systems are, are open, they are public, they are regulated by law. If a, a public uh, a developer wants a piece of land, they can apply to the department and the, the policy uh, and the circular that Ms. Makubele has been referring to is, is available to guide such processes. And, and therefore in this one, I'm trying to cover the concerns from Honorable Van Skalkweg to say when we do the swapping and when we do the transfer, um, we do state, especially when it is public to public. We do state in the, in the, in the uh, agreement that if you do not utilize this land for, we've reduced it, it even more now, especially for such uh, departments as, um, human settlements, because we would give over a piece of land to human settlements and no development will take place for 10 years and, and beyond 10 years. And you find then people starting to do the invasions and um, the kind of troubles that we have with uh, the, what happens in the properties. And, and therefore we have agreed to reduce the, the, the time to say, if, if you do not do anything as the department within the next five years, we, we, will, um, we, we will then withdraw uh, this, this uh, agreement. So there is that, um, those measures that are inbuilt in, in, in the system. And indeed, uh, the fronting that uh, the honorable members are concerned with, it's something that does happen. Um, but I must say that um, with what you are raising honorable chair on the properties that we are giving over to social development, when we do this uh, transfer to social development, we do it at a point where social development must be ready, uh, both financially uh, and, and um, with the necessary resources to manage uh, that center uh, with the GPV sites. So it's, it's not something we just take a property and give over. It's something we negotiate to say, uh, where is the greatest need? And uh, are you ready as social development, uh, even in provinces to, to, to manage this? Because it will be a sad day if we hand over a property um, to, to the department and the department is not ready to, 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 to make it work uh, through, through the purpose and intention for which it was um, handed over. So we, we do this by agreements, uh, those, those handing overs. They are still continuing. Um, there is a, a, a report on how far we are. We can provide that uh, a, when, if members so uh, 
request. I, I thought I needed to just uh, remove that part uh, to say, as we do the transferring, we do secure that uh, and ensure that um, the best we can, that there is no, um, one would say corruption that takes place because for me, fronting is one form of uh, corruption. Um, I will go give over to Ms. Makubele to deal with the others and we'll come back uh, later uh, after she's responded. With your permission, Chair, thank you. May I come to the chairperson? Please continue. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, um, honorable members for, for the comments and the, and, and the questions. Um, <clears throat> I have um, on, the, on the platform, the project manager who is responsible for this program, Mr. Solin Chwani. He will assist me with the response, um, how we're gonna deal with the NPOs to avoid abuse of the system. It's something that um, has, has bothered us as well as a department and we were trying to find ways how best to, to deal with it. Honorable Hicklin and Honorable uh, Graham Murray, I've already sent um, you my email address to request that you send the specific cases to me. And then my team and I will sit down and see what is the blockage for each individual case. I may not have the answers with me here today, but we will, we will definitely go through the, the list of the properties that you've raised and then we'll find um, out what the problem is and what we're gonna do about that. And then uh, there's a specific uh, question from um, Honorable Graham Murray about the Operation Bring Back project. That project is underway. Um, there's two, it's two pronged. There's a process that was followed by the SIU. We actually recently um, um, been informed that the SIU has successfully um, uh, won the case to return the, 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 the about three properties that were illegally transferred. One of the properties, I think it's the one where we were supposed to build the Pan-African Parliament, and that property was successfully uh, won back over. But as a branch, we also have a project that we're going to do where we're going to seek out these properties. This is based on the, on, the, on the project that was done, I think, in 2017, 2018, where about, uh, I think, 1,200 properties were identified as having been illegally um, occupied or transferred or stolen. And those are the properties that we're going to try and, and, and recover as a department. Like I said, the SIU is ahead ahead of us because they were doing this, those specific bigger project and they, they have successfully uh, transferred, I think three, I mean, won the case to, to transfer back about three properties, but it's a project that is going on. Um, is this project uh, of one secular one preferred going to go, it, it, it is an ongoing project. It's not a once off project. We, um, um, like I said, we have properties. We can only handle about two, 200, 300 properties at a time because of capacity constraints, obviously. So we, we are definitely <clears throat> gonna continue going forward and, and, and maybe not also limited to the 5,000. It's what we know now uh, based on what our, our asset register says. So as and as an when we identify more properties, the, pro the project definitely will, will, will continue. Um, Honorable Van Scarfake, um, I think um, I, I agree with you. M most of these uh, uh, problems are problems that we, we, we have known for, for a long time as a department, and we were very reactive in, 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 in dealing with them in terms of us finding out that the property has been invaded and then sending security or, or trying to evict um, um, uh, those, those invasions. But that was a reactionary from our side. Hence, now we are trying to do a strategy that is somewhat proactive and will, will relieve the department the burden of having to pay for, 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 for properties. Like we're spending a lot of money on security, like uh, Honorable Graham Murray has said. 
And that's what we're trying to, to, to achieve with the secular. But we agree all these all the statements that you make are true. And that is what we're trying to rectify, honorable. And then um, the swapping of properties, I think the DM has has tried to cover that, but we try as as um as much as we can to have fair value or similar value. Maybe the similar value may not necessarily be monetary, but in terms of what is it that we want to do in that particular property, then the value may be realized at a later stage. Um, I think from the chairperson and an honorable from Skype, the issue of the GBVF properties has come up. We, we have, um, we, we are actually at the tail end of the process in that the properties have been identified, the properties have been uh, refurbished by the department. Some properties have been taken, I think they were, uh, I think it's South Corp in, in Houting, but the rest of the properties are not yet done because we still have to finalize the memorandum of <clears throat> understanding between the two departments, between ourselves and social department. There is also a process that the social development department is also re requesting that we do to permanently dispose these properties to them. And that's a different uh, discussion altogether, but it's, it's a process that we're still, we're still working on. And as a department, we are ready to, to, to hand them over as soon as the um, administrating, administrative issues um, are dealt with. Uh, do we know the state of the properties, um, of the various buildings? from Honorable Van Skalpeg. We have a branch um, that is responsible for this, which is called the Facilities Management Branch. They have a um, they have a program to do conditions assessments for us. Conditions assessments are usually a, a laborious process and a, a very expensive process. So we try to do it in as in-house as possible. And when we do that, obviously it takes it takes a longer time than it would if we were to be able to outsource. Guillermo requires that we do this every five years, and it is not a well. It, it, financially, it, it, it's not. It's not. It's not yet feasible. But we do. We do send out teams to do conditions assessment for for for, for us. Um, uh, the property in Congo um, uh, from the chairperson. Chairperson, we have a challenge as a department where. We 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 give or we we give uh, properties to client departments such as justice for them to house their officials like magistrates or defense or or subs. But when they leave those properties, they simply just leave without notifying the department. And we only found out after the fact that the properties have been vacated um, for a period and now they have been vandalized. But I will look into the into, into that specific matter with my colleagues in the Eastern Cape and find out what we are doing um, about that, that specific um, uh, property. Uh, Soli, uh, can you come through and deal with the uh, fears that honorable members are raising regarding the NPO and NGOs? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Ms. Makubela. Uh, thank you, DM, for the for the explanation and and the um, and the response to all. Are there any follow up questions on our members on on who want to add? Um, Chairperson. Ms. Makubele was yes. was uh, indicating that Soli is going to deal with uh, some of the questions. Soli, Mwani. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, uh, that's why he, his his mic was on. Okay. Mr. Mwane, Soli, come through, please. Uh, uh, good morning, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, Honorable Members. Uh, good morning, DM, and uh, good morning, DDG. Thank you, DDG. In terms of uh, the process that will be involved in terms of dealing with a nonprofit organization, I think uh, uh, actually by the Act number 71 of 1997, 
Organizations Act. That particular act provides a procedure under which a non profit organization can be registered. And one of the key elements is that a non profit organization must have a constitution. And in the constitution, they must define the, the intended of the NGO and how the, the NGO will be conducting. One of the key factors also is uh, the accounting records and reports. It compares the NGO to We have lost this report on an annual basis. And uh, Mr. Nwane, uh, we can't hear you. Your line is so, so, so bad. DM, we we had, we have challenges with the the response of Mr. Nwane. I yes. think you also experienced that yourself. Yes, yes. No, let 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 me take over from here, Jay, and and uh, respond to your question on the cutting of cost. We do repurpose uh, our, some of our buildings. Um, with a view to 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 cut cost uh, of of those of sub of um, contracting for departments. One example, just now, uh, about a few weeks back, I was here in Johannesburg, where old uh, flats that were utilized as residential properties uh, for for subs, which got. Uh, kind of dilapidated um, those those properties are now I mean that property is now uh, it has been uh, uh, repurposed um, it's now the most beautiful police station with ample space um, for police uh, to 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 do their work uh, in a meaningful way, it's 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 um, also very user friendly in terms of uh, com compliance with uh, disability needs. Um, it, it 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 looks now like a modern uh, building, uh, and and therefore we we do there is that work where we repurpose. Uh, we remove uh, police where they were renting space into the, the, the space that now uh, we, we have. Uh, it's just a, a project that has just been finished. And, and there are others across the country, but it's, it's just that um, we, we, I think we, we needed to make these examples of, of these uh, areas. But the, also on the question of um, the, I think I dealt with the question of unintended uh, consequences as were raised by um, Honorable Franz Kalkwe, that we, we do um, try and insert clauses in the agreements that will prohibit um, 
such unintended consequences. Um, but I, I, do, I do want to indicate uh, or invite honorable members because uh, the report does indicate that uh, there's, there's the, the amount of, of buildings uh, and properties that we are dealing with are uh, in, in, in tens of thousands. Now, we can't know oh, what is happening in each, but when we, we, we I'm taking now the, the invitation uh, from Honorable um, Graham Mare of, of the need to find each other, that when, when such, when members are doing their constituents work and you come across these, uh, please do write to the, the, my office, the minister's office, uh, and it's good that uh, nearly it has also uh, submitted a, a email address. Write to us. Just now, Mzimfubu municipality, if, if, if I make, can make another example, Chairperson, Mzimfubu municipality says to me, uh, DM, we were, were interacting with your department um, since 2013. Uh, in, and in 2017, there was agreement uh, from Honorable Minister uh, Nwesi that we would swap a piece of land for a, a police station. I mean, for a taxi rent, sorry. We will swap a, a piece of land behind the police station for a taxi rank uh, with yourselves. And there's no movement. And as we speak now, there's interaction and um, I'm monitoring that that does happen. And I'm therefore also would want to, uh, for, for honorable members, uh, as you do your constituents work, where you meet such, when municipality is struggling with this and that, please just uh, write to us so that we, we can do the necessary monitoring and uh, the necessary follow-ups. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think uh, I've, I've, I've covered uh, what I needed to. Thank you, Chairperson. <coughs> Thank you, GM. I don't know whether Mr. Ngane now is in a better place or we just uh, close this matter. Mr. Ngane, are you back? No, he's not yet back. Um, thank you uh, again, um, DM, um, for, for that explanation that you have just given. I think it will also assist um, some of us in, in talking to our constituencies and, and to the people that are interested in the areas. Um, I had what you said about the, the, the municipalities, um, especially the land. Uh, I know property, you talk of land, you talk of buildings. Uh, but uh, in, in my case, I was referring to buildings. We will talk to the municipality uh, on on what route to follow if they want um, this. But it must also be written down that we're giving you the land. We are not expecting you to sell this land. We donating it to you to build a municipal offices or to do whatever, but not to sell it to developers. Thank you again, uh, DM and your team for such a presentation. Ms. Martinez, uh, now, I invite you to deal with the second item of our business today. Ms. Martinez? Yes, Chairperson. Yes, we were saying that let's deal with the second part of our uh, items today, that of dealing with the minutes. I'm just trying to open it here now. Please hold on for a bit. Okay, thank you.
Uh, whilst uh, Ms. Martinez uh, is loading chair, the, the officials of the department are asking if they should remain on the platform. Or should they? Oh, they can be reduced. The... No, we are true with the department now. We are going to deal with our own uh, issues as the portfolio committee. Okay. So you may be released. Uh, uh, um, I yeah, hope it's the visible, Chairperson. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Not Thank yet. You. Not yet on my side. I don't know other members, but uh, we do have the copy. Uh, Is it visible now, Chairperson? Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. All right. Thank you, Chair. Um, before I got kicked out, um, unfortunately, I do apologize for that. We are now dealing with the minutes of the meeting that was held yesterday, which was the 20th of September, where the committee dealt with the consideration and adoption of the expropriation bill report and the minutes of the previous meetings. So I just would like to check if members are satisfied with the register as presented. And then the apologies of Honorable Siwisa and Mr. Denison were also noted and recorded. So on the expropriation bill report, uh, Honorable Job was seconded by Honorable Graham Murray move for the adoption of the minutes. And obviously it has been captured that the DA in the ACDP highlighted that they were not in support of the report, but um, or they were in support of the report, but not the bill itself. The EFF had already um, indicated its uh, dissatisfaction with the whole, whole entire bill. Um, then moving to the consideration and adoption of minutes, um, minutes of the 31st of August, and the meeting of the 14th of September were adopted and um, were considered and adopted. Then Honorable Thring dealt with general matters, the issue of ESCOM and load shedding. Um, that should be all from my side, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Honorable members, uh, the minutes for our yesterday's meeting May I then uh, get a mover that those minutes are the true reflection of what we discussed yesterday? And, and uh, a mover and a second. Honorable members. Chair, I propose Chair. that we drop them. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Grammare, Honorable Marcelle. Maybe before that, can Nola flag the minutes back so that uh, one captures uh, what she's saying about the D and the EFF? All right, not a problem. Thanks, no, send me, send. Let me let me quickly highlight it so that it can be visible to everyone. Yeah, no, I think a proper reflection of the minute must remove what you are saying about the EFF is fine. We know what the, we know their view, but they were not there in yesterday's meeting. So it will be wrong for us to assume what okay. they will have said in the meeting. That is in order, according to me. I move that I support what uh, Graham Murray have proposed. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, um, Honorable Marcelle. Then we adopt those minutes with the amendment that uh, Honorable Marcelle has, has, has uh, effected. Any announcements? No further announcements from my side, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Thank you again, Honorable Members, for a fruitful, constructive uh, portfolio committee meeting that we had today your insightful um, discussions when we were dealing with the issue of the properties of the department is always um, welcome. Um, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Good day, everybody. Have a good day. Recording stopped. Good day.